everyone, I'm Keith Caulfield with Billboard.com and we are joined today by McFly. Hello. Yeah. Hi. 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 Uh, thanks so much for doing this because you're only here in Los Angeles for a rather short amount of time before you then go to New York for a pair of shows. And I have to say, I think Americans have been waiting far too long for you to come to the U.S. to play shows. We talked about this before a couple months ago, Tom, but tell me again from all four of you, why is it taking so long for you guys to come here? We in don't in really <laughs> know, to be honest, I think is the answer. Like, it's been frustrating for us. We wanted to come for years, but, um, you know, for one reason or another, it just, you know, hasn't happened until now. I think we kind of put our foot down this year and said, um, we have to come this year. It's right. like now or never. Um, otherwise, we're going to be like 50 before we, before we make it over. Because you're so ancient right now. Oh, yeah, we are, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but why was it like now or never this year, Danny? Why, why did it seem like right now was a good time? I don't really know. That just, in case, just in case we'd peaked already. <laughs> yeah. Or we were peaking. I think, uh, I don't know, I think it just like got to the point where we were like, do you know what, we're going we're gonna to make this happen because no one else is. So, uh, yeah, it's yeah. kind of happened. It just worked out. Yeah. And it's working out great because... We're here today on the Monday show, and they already did a Friday show, which evidently, according to all the YouTube clips I've watched, was pretty awesome, mm. right? Yeah. yeah. Amazing, yeah. And, it, you know, we've, so we've got four shows, two here, two in New York. Right. Um, and they all sold out pretty quick, so it was, you know, it's been, it's been a successful trip so far. Because we didn't really have any plans for this trip. We didn't, you know, it's not really a tour. It's just kind of four shows to test the water and see how they do, right. and hopefully... You know, from the response we've had, it means we can come back and maybe do bigger venues or do more dates or, you know, add more, add more cities. I think by the indication so far, you could probably come back and, I hope so. and fill yeah. up. Yeah. We would <laughs> like to come back as soon as possible and then do some more shows and, yeah. and uh, hire some more cars with no roofs and drive around listen, yeah. listening to your amazing radio stations. Really? I just think we were discovered these... 50s on 5, 60s on 6, oh, 70s on 7, yeah. it yeah. was awesome, we've yeah. just been cruising around changing them. Cool. Um, now, you're playing new songs at the shows, there were I think three new songs you played Friday? Uh, yeah. yeah. Red was one of them. Uh, Red, Touch the Rain. And then the and brand, brand new yeah, one. Yeah, brand new, Love is Easy. Which, yeah. which is kind of funny to watch the clip because it's the one song that no one can sing along to yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they can't drown him out for yeah. once. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah I, that was only written about three week, two, three weeks ago. Really? Yes, yeah, so mm -hmm. it's brand, brand new. Will it be on the next album? Uh, it will be coming out in the UK around Christmas time. Um, so not so not on the album. So no, it won't be on the next no, album. No. So it's a special single release of some sort. Yeah. yeah. Some of the fans actually wanted to know uh, how how much did you have to sort of plea with the band to get the ukulele onto the song. <laughs> not one. <laughs> I bit. think I liked bit. it. Yeah. I was quite disappointed. I've got a pink one at home, which is what I've been writing everything on, but it's it's acoustic. It doesn't plug in, so I haven't been able to bring that one with me. So it's a good little story, not, actually. There's that? a shop called um, Argos in England. And he wanted to get a ukulele, and they only had a pink one left, a girl's ukulele left. Nothing wrong with pink. Uh, and he couldn't be bothered to go to this the different shop that was like half an hour away to get the other colour. So I he got the pink one. Get a pink one. Bit of and it worked out well. And like you said, he come and played us this song, and we all really liked it. And then uh, recorded it at Danny's, and here we are playing it in um, America. Um. Can we talk about the new album at all? Like, do we know yeah. when it may be coming? You don't know exactly. Well, Danny's producing it, so it's whenever he pulls his finger out and gets it finished, basically. No pressure. No, pressure. <laughs> um, no sometime next year, I think maybe around the, the summer next okay. year, June, July in the UK. But then we don't have a record uh, deal over here, so it depends what happens over here, whether we, you know, someone wants to sign us and put out our album over here, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> we don't really know. Um, how is producing the album? Because is it just you producing or is it all four of you kind of McFly produces or is it really just all on you no it's not it's not all on me it, you know we we sit down and and we sort of just produce things and I vibe off the guys the guys vibe You're off me executive and producer the executive yeah it's producer. just that I help them do things <laughs> that they want to do well, Danny's, um, Danny's the, uh, the only one who knows how to use all the technical 
gizmos in the studio. I've sat and watched for no, for like nearly ten years and just not absorbed any information from what the producers have been doing. Whereas <laughs> Danny's Danny sat and watched and learnt everything. Well, me and Dougie actually know all about it, but we just we just like to keep that to ourselves. <laughs> why do why do the extra work if mm. he's yeah, right? Yeah, I know exactly. all about like Pro Tools and that. I just choose <laughs> to, to let Danny have his moment to shine. Right, because he doesn't have I many opportunities to nah. shine. I don't really have any, you know. Not really. It's obviously, in the no. case, everyone's looking at the drummer. Right. Not the front man. Right. Yeah. 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 So I need my my, my moment to shine. <laughs> I, I want to ask: Has has the the DJing and all that stuff on the side sort of helped you learn more technology to produce the record? Do you Not know what? It, the, yes, it did. Yeah. Um, when the boys were doing the reality shows back in England, I got time just to geek out on all this, and and it, it actually started. It's weird because like, I wanted to produce bands and help up and coming bands and I never really had time and it was too much stress and stuff so I started I was wondering what can I do in my hotel room and back then it was you know electronic music and I loved it and yeah. you know my, when I was younger my mum told me to you know turn it off and put Springsteen back on and I'd be like oh, yeah but I like Springsteen as well as, as as dance music you know it's okay he made dance records I mean sort of dancing, so, dan so, dancing yeah, yeah. in the dark you could dance to that <laughs> You could. Courtney Cox but. did in the video. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know Danny thought she was an actual fan? Like, she, I'm sure she is in real life, but Danny didn't realize she was. It was all set up. Like it was all set yeah. up. He was like, he thought that's how she had a yeah, lucky that's break. That's right, like she was discovered. <laughs> yeah. wow. It is right. It. Yes. Uh, Thank you. Of course yeah. it is. The four friends and everything else. <laughs> um, did you know he's played here? You know that, Roxy. right? Yeah. He's played the Roxy. Yeah, no, this. you knew that. Mate, everyone's they played, played it. Here, no, he pl I actually didn't know that. No, he played a series of really famous shows in like 75 here. You can find them on YouTube. Great audio quality. All the greats have played it. Hold on, hold on. Is that the one where he plays Spirit in the Night and he goes uh, off the stage? I don't know. I don't oh. have video. I just heard the audio. I think, I think I've seen the video. But no, I mean, Guns N' Roses, Nirvana, The Door, everyone wow. has played here. Is that, does that weigh upon Mate, you at all when you sit here going, in this amazing. room... Because there's there's Just a picture yes over there. Know. Bob Marley was in this room, and that's a picture of him in this room on the wall in the room that you're in right now. Like, is wow! That, you think about that at all when you're like on this stage? Well, me, me, Dougie, and Tom do, but <laughs> obviously Dan, Danny. <laughs> Danny thought this was built your, yesterday. Your favorite <laughs> artist? You didn't realize he played here. <laughs> But this is new, right? <laughs> yeah, they just built it two years ago. Oh, well, do you know what? Like from uh, from a couple of things I've read and over the past and about being reminded about the Rainbow Bar as well and yeah. the Roxy and, and the Viper Room and the House of Blues and stuff it's it's um, it's almost like you're at Disney World for, yeah. for, for music you know, yeah, I think for an English band like you hear about all these places but it, it kind of they feel like mythical places that don't really exist so when you come here you're just there yeah it doesn't really you just it's actually it's a real very, place it's like a movie set yeah, it's, it's almost like, like it's, it's fake real. yeah, it's, yeah. Fake. it's and it's so perfectly rustic and set up like that it it shouldn't be real. 